Did you know that Elizabeth Holmes, former CEO and founder of Theranos, currently on trial for nine counts of fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit fraud, is magic? It's true. It's absolutely true. This week, while Holmes was on her sixth day of giving testimony, the prosecutors kept bringing up evidence about things that had happened. Prosecutor Robert Leach asked Holmes about the fortune cover article by Roger Parloff, the one that she proudly sent to investors. The article contained many errors because Holmes either gave him incorrect information or never bothered to correct him. At the time, you were not worried people would be given an inaccurate impression, Leach asked. But Holmes was unfazed. She was like, I use 10 mana and cast revisionist spell. And this allowed Holmes to alter the fabric of space-time itself in order to go back and completely rewrite history. Of course this is what happened. Because how else could she have responded with, I was not. Leach knew something weird had just happened because the errors and omissions were ones that conveniently painted Theranos as more technologically savvy than it really was. Leach highlighted three passages from Parloff's article. Theranos currently offers more than 200 and is ramping up to offer more than 1,000 of the most commonly ordered blood diagnostic tests, all without the need for a syringe. Theranos, which does not buy any analyzers from third parties, is therefore in a unique position. They take up a small fraction of the footprint required by a conventional lab today. So. Prosecutor Leach, trying desperately to counter Holmes' magic, asked her, You agree with me that this was an incorrect statement? But with the safety of Holmes' spell, she could sit back comfortably and respond, I believe that now. And this might sound like an admission, but don't underestimate Holmes' magic powers. See, she only said that to give Leach a false sense of security so that he'd walk straight into her trap. You don't have a memory of forwarding the Parloff article to investors or potential investors, Leach said. That's just what Holmes wanted. Hocus pocus, all your memories are out of focus. And suddenly, it was as if the evidence became a small number of tiny pixels on a low resolution image that got upscaled a hundred times using bicubic interpolation. And with this new spell in place, Holmes could answer, I don't. Now, if this surprises you, if you think that this is just some fairy tale, make believe thing I'm creating to entertain you, let's look back on how Holmes became the witch that she is today. See, it all goes back to her time at Stanford. She wanted to invent a device that people would wear, which would monitor for infections and automatically dispense antibiotics if any were detected. When she asked her business professor, Ms. McMuggle, for help getting investors, Ms. McMuggle told her that what she was describing was magic. Well, you can't do that. It's impossible, physically. Antibiotics are not potent. You cannot do that. The reason you have a big IV bag, okay. So I said, I, Elizabeth, that's fun, but I don't think that's gonna work. So Holmes dropped out of Stanford and applied to Hogwarts. But unfortunately for Holmes, there were some ethical red flags on the essay portion of her entrance exam, and the admissions officers were also a bit weirded out by the fact that she bore an uncanny resemblance to Draco Malfoy. This is when she made a deal with the Death Eaters and founded Theranos. Together, they managed to raise $177 million in investment funding and became valued at just under $10 billion, all by using dark magic. Unfortunately for Holmes, we also found out this week that Prosecutor Leach also had some tricks up his sleeve. He caught on to Holmes' spell and used some counter magic of his own. Let's refresh your memory, Leach said. He then pulled up an email from June 12th, 2014 that Holmes had sent to Theranos shareholders. In it was a link to Parloff's fortune article. Then there was the matter of Theranos devices and the US military. Leach began his questioning by asking whether the military ever used Theranos devices on its medevac helicopters. It did not, she replied. Did she ever tell investors that it did? Well, naturally, Holmes tried countering this line of questioning with more magic spells. I don't think so, Holmes replied. But Leach was too powerful. He then pointed to testimony given by witnesses, including Parloff, Safeway's ex-CEO Stephen Bird, and investors Brian Grossman, Brian Tolbert, and Lisa Peterson. They all said that Holmes told them that Theranos devices were being used on military helicopters. 
Ouch. I hope you enjoyed my attempt at an entertaining spin on this week's events. I was actually expecting a lot more Theranos news to come out this week, and when the Ars Technica article dropped yesterday, it was actually kind of a dry read. The typical Holmes lying a whole bunch. I've put the link in the description if you want to read the whole thing. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you next time.